Okay, forgot to turn the recording on, so most of the code has already been typed, but that's probably good. One of the things we don't have in our code right now is the ability when the user clicks the reset button, it resets all the data, but it doesn't hide the error markers. So what we're doing in this code is first creating a list, an array, of all the document elements that are images, so all the images on my form. Then we walk through them one at a time. If the image we're currently looking at has an error at the beginning, if the index of the ID of error is zero, ERR, I put ERR at the beginning of all my error marker images, must be an image because that's all we've got, and it starts with ERR, then hide it. Only took 51 seconds to do that in the recording. That entire piece of code is actually in my notes. So we got it. So now we'll save that and give it a quick test. We'll make all kinds of mistakes here and clean things out. This integer value, by the way, should have a key press attached to it in the real world, right? Date, give it some junk. Currency, give it some, can't give it too much junk. Still haven't picked any of those. Test my form. Here's my error message. And there's lots of errors. And I go, you know what? I want to start over. That's a mess. Reset. Uh oh. Do I have a firebug error? How come my error icons did not go away? I did save this. Reset form. And button reset on click is reset form. So how come none of my error markers went away? Hmm. Okay, well, let's do a little debugging. Let's make sure we got in there. So I'm going down to reset form. Because it did reset. Somebody was asking me today if I need to alphabetize my methods. This is why. Notice how long it takes me to scroll through my, my code here. Oh, there's reset form. It's got nothing in it. Where did I put my code? inside of reset form. I did save it. Maybe I forgot to refresh the page. There we go. That's better. Just forgot to refresh. So that gives you an app that's pretty darn close to what we were doing in programming logic intermediate. Puts error markers out there, tells them what's wrong. Gives you the ability to clear the error markers. Test the entire form before you submit it. And then the last thing I would like to change is in my code, if everything's cool, that's validate form. Oh, I did. I returned all okay. So if everything is okay, it should submit this form to the server. I didn't check the combo box to make sure I picked anything in there. I did say I had to pick a class or more. I don't know how to do is how to get that done on my keyboard here. Maybe that's not a multi-select. Okay. Test it. Uh-oh. Something's re oh, we never did do a well no, we should have done that. So something's wrong. Because it told me that I had to fix the error that's on the form and there's no errors on the form. So one of my functions is returning an error. 
when it shouldn't. So now the challenge is which one of these is causing trouble. Okay, and I think I'm going to try putting a break. Validate value should both be lowercase. Which one? Validate a, a B should be lowercase. So actually there's still a syntax error and my bug wasn't showing it to me. Yours is, they should all be lowercase. Mine's not. Mine's uppercase. They should all be lowercase. You're right, but I'm not going to go through and change them all at this stage. Question is, which one of those is causing trouble? I'm going to try to set a breakpoint inside of validate or no short, short circuit and. So I'm going to try to set the validation or the breakpoint in there and try to see what result is and see when it comes up false. Okay, so right now result is true, because that's what I initiated it to. And now I'm going to step over, which should be the first call, whatever that is, we can check once it turns false. Remember the arguments is true, true, false. That's interesting that you can see all those. So the third one is the one that's causing trouble. Very good. That's validate currency. Error style visibility. Another very common mistake is a single equal sign there. I didn't do it, but a very common mistake. The visibility is set to hidden. So let's just do this validation. Put the breakpoint in there because it's just and found. You can touch these arguments and actually see them, which surprises me that they're already pre-processed because you would think that none of those arguments are even being called until we walk through them. I'm just going to verify that. I'm going to walk through these. Two, three. There it goes. Okay. I is two. So that's the third one. And that's what caused the problem. That's the currency. Now I'm going to move my breakpoint into validate currency and try to see what's wrong there. Okay. So now I have an error style visibility of hidden. If the pointer is not equal to the empty string, F10, it's not. Entered value is 100, that's good. Is the entered value less than? No, then it, the entered value is 100. And I return the area of it, uh oh, ERR style dot visibility is undefined. I'm missing an I because you didn't get out. Is it? I sure am. Nice. I'm definitely getting that guy candy. That would take me about half an hour to see that one. Copy and paste. Okay, so now I've got all that. Let's run this again. I'm going to have to refresh my page anyways. Put in some stuff. That's out of range. I broke Firefox. Still getting errors. All 
arguments true, true, true with two more. The fourth one is false. So that would be number five on my list. Validate value. Same problem. <laughs> And I did copy and paste that one, didn't I? And that's what it's supposed to do. So after you get all the typing errors out of there, and it's interesting that I don't get any JavaScript errors on those. It just goes through and says, okay, I did it. Set your visibility property to hidden, whatever that is. And no errors. But now you have that application that you should be able to use. And this is going to be the foundation for most of what we do next semester in systems implementation and systems data management or web data management because there we're going to take this data and put it into a database. I want to have it validated before it gets there and from a user's perspective it's much friendlier to validate on the client side than it is on the server side. We can do all the same validation on the server side but the user sends the data to the server, server validates it, makes a list of bad errors and sends them back and then they get refreshed on the page. So we can leave it up to PHP to do all that, but there's really nothing that PHP can do validation-wise that JavaScript can't do except duplicate record checks. The last thing I added to my notes because so many people thought it was cool was the Jaren Yak technique of error markers. He doesn't use a little symbol. He just has a span here. This is a span that has an ERR name to it. And then he uses this CSS, mostly this CSS. This CSS is just that little arrow right there. That little attach me to that box arrow is all done with this before clause. Before this, put in a little triangle pointing to the left to make it just this size. So this part you can almost ignore. But here he changes the background color to the dark red, puts a border around it, rounded border, three pixel rounded border. That's why the box is a little rounded on the edges. Color white, font bold, left margin eight pixels to push it away, plus make room for this thing. A little bit of padding inside a Z index. If you're in a Star Trek fan, you know what the Z index is. Wrath of Khan. It's going to Distinctly two-dimensional attack plan, so we move down and come back up, and we're right behind them. Sneaky stuff. Z indexes as things are stacked on your form. You can have multiple things, and if these error markers are long enough, they might be sitting on top of one of your images. Z index of 999 says, I'm on top. Whatever's over out there, I'm going to cover it up. And so that he probably discovered he needed when he had something on the side that was covering up his error message instead of the other way around. And then he puts an absolute position on it. And that works better if it's two lines long, but hopefully the hint isn't that long. So all you have to do with this one, I don't have a demo of it, sorry, going back to the notes here. All you have to do with this one is put a span here and name it ERR field. And then if you need to, if there's an error, you change your message. Instead of providing an icon, all the user has to do is hover over to see that a user, this technique displays the error message. What it doesn't tell me here is how do I make it appear and I think how do I get rid of it. I think if there's nothing in it, it just disappears. Put in a span. But it's all CSS. It's all done with CSS and all you have to do is put the message in. I think if the message isn't there, it all goes, 
How could it go away? I'll have to look. I think I have an example of this someplace. I'll bring it up. But if you're interested, you can play around with this a little bit and not use my little red markers. And by the way, if you'd rather use skull and crossbones instead of my little red exclamation mark that I stole from Visual Studio, knock yourself out. So, given that, it's time to give me a due date for JavaScript 10. Tomorrow. Just kidding. <laughs> It should be one of the longer ones. You can see some of the pitfalls, like spelling visibility for me. For other people, you know, there's always a pitfall in there someplace. So, what happened? Did I lose my last pass? Oh, brother. Yeah, you're right. That's The recording's still on, Tim, so you should be able to, I think it's still on, you should be able to hear the due date if you wish. It'll also go into Blackboard right away if you need to catch your bus. Uh, yeah, the bus is taking short. Thank you. Yep. Uh, Wednesday night, midnight. Wednesday, into this. <laughs> no, next Wednesday. Week from Wednesday. Week from Wednesday, not bad. Okay. We'll see what they say. That'll be a good Friday in your... Before you exit out of your uh, JavaScript, mm -hmm. try... Can I kill the recording? Sure. <laughs> because I don't have a word. But, um, oh, try what? Um, to change the custom or to change the error message that you should know by device. Oh, yes. Try saying the variable with the pointer. Yeah. Whatever, like text box. Dot set custom validity. Set custom validity. Okay, so if we have currency is required here, we can say err dot set custom validity. Another good one for me to spell. And then in parentheses would be like whatever error message is. Okay. Would you want to set that to the pointer? Yeah. To the pointer or to the air? Oh, yeah, you're right. Okay, so now when I come in here, give it everything else. Leave the currency blank. And what the heck did, oh. Two digit years don't work well. See, this is already there, but now if I try to test my form, oh, I didn't designate, <sighs> sorry, I didn't designate that one as required. It's required in JavaScript, but not required in HTML5. And that's in the validation, right? In our validation is where that would go. Might be able to just set that period, but... All right, one more time. Reset the form and just test it right away. Very good. So now we can tweak that too. And we have to hover to see it anyway. So my ball, that ball, yeah, that's, you can get that to work for everything. That would be great. The other, I guess the next question is then, is there a way that I can tell HTML5 whether you think there's an error or not? There is. My error. Probably. Because dates... I don't think if I put that out of range, HTML5 is going to complain. Even with the PTR min and max, I don't think HTML5 complains. Okay. 
What was the range limits on the date? Fourteen eleven. What did I? Oh, I used May. Okay. We'll just leave that. Test. And HTML5 still got a pink box on there for some reason. Whoa. Yeah, I care about it. Once it's set, it's the title is what it looks like almost, right? Because this even this even this isn't the same as it was before. That's just it looks almost like the title. Because before there was a little box that hovered underneath here. When I tried to submit this form, oh it's stuck. Oh, still haven't. I think you're thinking about a new process. Maybe. Yeah. So that didn't do exactly what it was. It was all right. But you're right. You'd have to come back in here then and do the set custom validity to something else. Like the empty string, but that was the same thing that my title was doing, wasn't it? And I thought I was getting both. I haven't used Chrome. I was getting both. I thought. All right. Enough for the recording. I'll play with it, and that's good to know, though. Thank you.